This is just a real quick warning that some clips are used from previous editions of your textbook, and the titles might not match up, but all the content is really just the same. We're going to talk about different quotients, and really, a difference quotient has to start off with any discussion with a difference quotient has to talk off with secant lines. What's a secant line? Let me show you what a secant line is. Uh, now, I don't have to tell you how important slopes are in uh, math and also slopes in real life. Like, slopes are about how you, uh, how you can talk about how fast something goes or with, uh, how much money are we uh, making every year or how, f you know, how many miles per hour are we going or kilometers per second or how quickly is, uh, does a cheetah how overtake the gazelle, you know, all those, anytime you're talking about uh, speeds of things, you're really talking about slopes. So slopes are incredibly important, and slopes of lines are kind of like the stuff of Algebra 1, but the slopes of things that are curved are is really difficult to find. How do you figure out what the slope of this point is when the function is a curve? And really the best way to do that is to... Uh, is to think about two different points. If your goal is to find out what is the slope, how fast is the cheetah running, if, if this is the cheetah curve right here, how fast is the cheetah running um, at this particular point, the best thing to do is to actually just approximate it with two points, you know, and just make them kind of close to each other. And that way you'll get kind of an idea of how far the slope is. So here, so if this is the focus point right here, that we want to find the slope of, then what you can really just do is you can kind of cheat and take a second point over here and just make sure that it's kind of close. You know, choose an h value, a horizontal distance that is kind of small. And then you'll get kind of an approximation. We call that line a secant line. And, this, and finding the slope of a secant line isn't too bad because you really basically have two different points. Here's your first point, point number one, and here's your second point, point number two. And the, the horizontal distance between them is h, and the height difference between them would be this thing minus this thing. Whatever value you have for x, you put it into the function, and you get out the value of f, and then whatever, you, whatever this value is here, you put it into the function, you get it out. So here, what I mean is, let's choose specifically a function like x squared plus 1. Now, if the goal is to find out, and remember, uh, x squared plus 1 is a parabola. So if the goal is to find out what the slope is when x is equal to 2, then choose another point that's kind of close, like when x is equal to th uh, 3. The horizontal distance would be 1. So we're going to choose a point 2, comma, well, what is, what point, what's the height here? In order to figure it out, we have to plug it into f. So this would be 2 squared is 4 plus 1 to give you 5. And then the next point over would be 3. Remember, we've, we're choosing an H, a horizontal h value of 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3. And then when you plug 3 into the equation here, you get 3 squared plus 1, which is 10. To illustrate this, I want to go to Desmos, because I've got uh, something interesting to see. All right, kiddies, it's play at home time with Desmos. What that means is when I do something on Desmos, you do it too. Make sure you can show me your saved Desmos graphs when you arrive in class tomorrow. So this is a secant line demonstration. Our goal really here is, is to approximate the slope on a curve at a given x value. And the example we have is... Um, f of x equals x squared plus 1. There's a picture that I really want to show you uh, from the notes, or that I want to reference at least. Uh, it's in your notes, and it looks like this. And I think I want to just keep it alongside me in Desmos because I'm going to be using it so much. Uh, let me make it a bit nicer to look at. Maybe let's go into projector mode and take off that grid. We don't need the numbers. There we go. Okay. So here's here's the picture that I'm going to be referencing a bit. Um, what I really want to do is I want to graph two different points right here. I'm going to graph f, 
this is going to be x1, y1, x2, y2. And so um, the table that we have in the notes gives us a value for x1. It actually goes to a couple different values. In the table, we can see we're going to need x equals 2 and x equals 3. So I'm just going to make a slider. And then on top of that, in the, in the table, in the notes, we also have an h value. And that's going to be either 0 0.1 or 1. And so maybe I'll just make a slider for that too, since it's going to be changing depending on where we are on the table in the notes. So if I want h to be 1, it'll be that. If I want it to be 0.1, it'll be that. And then really what I want to do is I want to graph this one point. So I know I have the x1 value, and therefore I need the x2 value, uh, the y1 value. y1 is going to be uh, f of x1. So you can see here, if x1 equals 2, then you plug 2 into the function, 2 squared plus 1 is 5. And it even calculates it for you right there, 5. Well, let's plot that point. Uh, x1 comma y1. There it is, right there. And yeah, we like labels. Uh, let's go for the next point. So then we have, we need to define what x2 is. x2 is just going to be over here at whatever x is plus the value of h. The distance between these two points is h, so I'm just going to go x1 plus h. Oh, it even calculates it for you. Let's figure out what y2 is. y2, you're going to take this value of x plus h and put it into the function and get out a height uh, on the graph. So the function of x1 plus h. I could have also typed in just x2 right here, but just to match up with the graph, there it is. And so let's plot that also. I'll put it on this one. I want two points. I want x1, y1, x2, y2. And there they are. Well, the table in the notes is also going to ask us for the slope, so let's calculate that. We got that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the slope, oh, it gives us, it's, uh, the slope is 4.1. And uh, what we see in the notes, in this picture actually, we've got the graph, it doesn't look exactly the same, but maybe if we zoom in, it'll start to look the same. Let's move this up a little bit. Let me zoom in with the picture as well. So we have the graph of the function f, that's this curve, but we don't have uh, the secant line. But we do have the slope of the secant line. It's here, and we have the point. We have two points. We'll just use one of them, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's a formula for a point-slope line. And there it is. You can see it's purple. Maybe I'll change it to a different color so it contrasts better. How about red? OK, so this red secant line is graphed right here. And we're going to see that if I change the value of h, the distance between the two points, the secant line also changes. So the se if the secant line is 1, let's zoom out a little bit. The secant line is 1. The h, if the h value is 1, then you can see it goes from 2 to 3. But if we get closer and closer and closer, the secant line gives us a better and better and better value of what the slope is at this point. There's no such thing, really, as a slope of, at one point. You need two points to find a slope. But we can see that although the slope starts here out at a 5, the steepness of this red line is 5, then as we get closer and closer to the, point, the target point, we see that the slope is getting smaller and smaller. And in fact, when the distance is a tiny distance between these two points is just 0.1, then the slope gets down to 4.1. We could get even further if we wanted to. Let's get really close. Let's animate this. 
All right, so this, the point is getting closer and closer and closer. To, wow, oh, what just happened there? Let's take a look. Bam. So when there's a horizontal distance between these two points of one, 0 0.001, then you can see the secant line is really basically just touching this right here. And the slope is going to be 4.001. This is what calculus is all about. And in pre-calculus, we're getting ready for it. It's a huge, it's a really big, hairy deal. What is the slope at a single point? And we can't really get there yet, but we can get pretty close. We can get within, we can get as close as we want. We can add a zero here, and we see that we're still getting closer and closer to the slope at 2 comma 5. And I know that it says 2 comma 5 here and 2 comma 5 here, but really it knows that there's a slight difference. It's just that far away. And so then you can calculate the slope is 4.0001. Now something else you might have to consider is we have to figure out the rest of the table. Like x is 2. What about when x is equal to 3? Well, that changes the x1, y1. There it is. And then you can see here i got to zoom out quite a bit. So here's uh, the horizontal distance is 1. You go from 3 to 4. That's h is 1. and But the vertical distance is 7. That makes the slope equal to 17. You know, 17 minus 10 is 7. 4 minus 3 is 1. So it's 7 over 1. Slope is 7. Great. But if we move this line, this horizontal distance gets less and less and less and less down to 0.1, then we get a better approximation of what the, slo or the slope at this point would be. It's probably closer to 6.1 here. You can see the slope is 6.1. So that helps us fill out the table. But check this out. What if we go, what if we say that this value is even closer? Then look, what happens to the slope? So what happens if we just make this equal to 0, right? We might as well. Let's see what happens. So it's getting closer and closer to 0. And then when it actually equals 0, all of a sudden it disappears. These two points are plotted on top of each other. They're exactly the same. You get 10 minus 10 is 0. You get 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. 0 over 0 is undefined. As long as this horizontal distance is positive, you can have a line. But as soon as it hits exactly equal to zero, then the line disappears. At least here in pre-calculus. For this year, this is, we're going to have to make sure that h is always a positive number. But the giant leap that you're going to take next year when you take uh, calculus, if you take calculus, and I hope that you do, you'll, f you'll let h actually, actually perfectly equal zero. So, Desmos, the graph, gives us these values. And so I want you to take a moment to pause the video and copy these all down, if you haven't already. And now that you've copied them down, what I really want to talk about is, as you can see, these are generated uh, just by plugging values in. But what we can actually do is, in general, we can use x and h to figure out what what these would be for any values of x and h. So check this out. If we have this function, f of x equals x squared plus 1, then the first x, the x1 value would be just x, and then the function f of x would be, like we said, x squared plus 1. We always take x squared plus 1 for this function. Here x squared plus 1 was 5, and here x squared plus 1 was 10. So there, here, x squared plus 1 is just, we're just going to leave it as x squared plus 1. And then for the second point, we're just going to leave it in terms of x and h. So that would be uh, x plus h squared plus 1. We're taking this x value, taking this as your input and putting it into the function to be the input squared plus 1. That's what the function 
is telling us to do. Instead of no longer x, we're just doing it with x plus h. So now, let's find the slope between these two points. That's going to be x plus h squared plus 1. That's our y2 minus y1, which is x squared plus 1. I'll put that in parentheses. All over x2, which is x plus h minus x1. Remember, I'm getting this y2 from here, this y1 from here, this x2 from here, this x1 from here. I'm finding the slope between these two points. <clears throat> when I simplify them, I get this. I'll give you a moment to copy this down. I'm, I'll narrate it also. Uh, I'm squaring this, foiling it, and you get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then getting rid of these parentheses by distributing, we get the negative x squared and the minus 1. In the denominator, we can see that these x's cancel out, and we're just left with h. Moving on, we see also that certain things cancel out as well. I've got some like terms that will cancel out in the next step. So when I combine my like terms, you get 2xh plus h squared over h. And now I'm going to factor out an h from both terms in the numerator because I see that h is a factor. You get 2x plus just 1h over h. And of course, these cancel. So really, what we're left with is 2x plus h. Let's back up a little bit. You can see that this is a process that started with nothing more than the definition of slope and this function. Every function has a difference quotient. And so our goal is going to be able to go from, given a function, can you find its difference quotient? It's going to be the same process every time. Find the slope between these two points. In general, it's just x and h. And you can see even, like, given the, if this is the difference quotient, then here, when we said that we wanted x to be 2 and h to be 1, then the, then the slope would be just 2 times 2 plus 1, which is 5. And we calculated, we saw that visually here. When the x value was 3 and the h value was 1, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So really, this is a very fast way to figure out what the slope of the secant line is, the difference quotient. Let's do this. Let's do it again for another function. So let's do it for 2x minus 3. Let's find and simplify the difference quotient. All we're doing is we're starting with a function and we're saying, well, we've got two points. We've got, um, and maybe we'll just use the simplified version because remember this x, there's going to be an x plus h minus an x that will always cancel out. So why bother even using them in the formula? If you want to memorize the formula, here it is. Remember, it comes from the y2 and the y1 of finding a slope, x2 minus x1. But of course, you don't really need to know all that. You can just say that the formula is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So here we go. f of x plus h minus f of x is equal to over h. Let's use the function now. The function they give us is 2x minus 3. So I've rewritten the function twice. I've written it once here when the input is x plus h, 
and I've written it again here when the input is just x. And I've even grouped them with parentheses. This is f of x plus h minus f of x. And so now I'm going to simplify. Uh, bringing it up here, we've got 2x plus 2h minus 3 minus 2x. I'm going to distribute the negative, the minus here and here. This becomes plus 3 all over h. I see some like terms that are going to cancel. 2x and minus 2x and then th minus 3 and plus 3. So really, all I'm left with is 2 h over h. And when I simplify that, it becomes just 2. The difference quotient is 2. Well, that makes sense, because any time you try and find the slope of a point on anywhere on this, the slope is always going to be 2. It's going to be unchanging, regardless of what your x or h values are. So let's test that out. Let's take a look and see if we really make this 2x minus 3, what happens to the difference quotient? What's happened to the different points? Here, when x is 2, you can see I'm going to change the value of h. If that secant line is going to be right on top of the actual line of the function. And it doesn't matter what the value of h is, the slope is always going to be 2 between any, any two of those points. All right, so our goal is to be able to find the difference quotient for any function that, we, that they give us. So check this out. Let's, starting with just the function, let's write down the formula. The difference quotient is f of x plus h. I'm doing this from memory, folks, and you've got to be able to do it too, over h. What is the function? The function is 1 over x as we can see here, 1 over x. So I'm going to rewrite the function twice. 1 over uh, x plus h with the new input, and 1 over x with the normal input, all over h. Oh, we've, got a, we've got fractions within fractions, so how do we deal with that? We've got to get common denominators. So I think the common, least common denominator would be just multiplying the two together. Uh, x plus h. And we can't just do that to the denominator, we also have to do it to the numerator. And if we subtract, we get this. Combining the common denominators, we get x times 1 minus 1 x times 1 minus 1 times x plus h, all over the common denominator, which is x times x plus h, all over h. So remember, here was the top of this one. Here was the denominator of that one. Here it is here. And then the one last denominator is down here. Okay, let's simplify things a little bit. Let's distribute that subtraction, and let's also uh, move the h up, because really h is the same thing as h over 1, so we're going to divide by the reciprocal, or multiply by the reciprocal in order to move this fraction up. So getting rid of the 1s, we get x minus x plus h all over x times x plus h, and then times the reciprocal of h over 1, which is 1 over h. Great. Let's keep going. Then distributing the minus over the parentheses, we get x minus x minus h all over distributing here. We get x squared plus hx times 1 over h. I see some common denominators, I'm mean, sorry, some like terms that we can combine. 
And so that just becomes negative h over x squared plus hx. Yes, this is a plus times 1 over h. Well, wait a minute. These h's cancel. So we get cancel, cancel, and we're left with just negative 1 over x squared plus hx. If you want to find the slope of, of a secant line at any point x and with a distance of h, then you just plug it into this formula and it'll give you the slope. That is the difference quotient. Let's do it again here, and then we're done. Rewriting the formula that we have to have memorized, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So we get, in big parentheses, 2 times, I'm going to rewrite the formula twice. And as our input, it's not x anymore, it's x plus h. That is all of this, f of x plus h. I'm going to rewrite the formula my second time, inside parentheses, 2x squared minus x minus 3, all over h. Let's do some simplifying. When we FOIL, we get 2 times, because remember, we have to do the exponents inside, inside these parentheses first, x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus, I'm gonna, uh, minus x plus h minus 3, big parentheses. I'm going to distribute this subtraction here. We get 2x squared plus x plus 3, they become positive, all over h. And then I think we still have some more distributing of 2s and, and minus we can do. Getting rid of all of the parentheses, we have 2x squared plus now 4xh plus 2h squared minus x minus h minus 3, minus 2x squared, plus x, plus 3, all over h. I'm going to highlight some terms that are going to cancel. Cancel, cancel. Cancel, cancel. Cancel, cancel. What are we left with? We are left with 4... x h plus 2 h squared minus h, and that's it, all over h. Just to simplify it, just to shorten it, the h is going to cancel one of these, and we're left with 4 x plus 2 h minus 1. The minus 1 came from here. And this is it. 4x plus 2h minus 1 is the difference quotient. Did I mention as a part of my audio check that uh, Trenton is the capital of New Jersey? It really is. It's a great place to go. Visit it. I've been there. I love it. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to start assignment 2b2. That means copy the problem list and start the first problem. Do those things, and I will see you in class.